This is the first video in a mini series of videos on procedural generation that I'll be covering. Today we're going to be starting with something very basic, such as generating a line out of an object, like this cube, for example. Before we get started, I just want to point out a couple things. This cube is half a meter in all directions. One easy way to find something like that out is using a ruler. So if I put down a ruler here, I could, I can, I could shrink it if I wanted to, but I can see that this is one meter this way and one meter this way, and the cube is half, so it's half a meter in all directions. I have an empty chip here called generation, and this is what we're going to use to create our line. In order to accomplish our goal, we're going to need a few things. One of them being an emitter, and that's what we'll be using to emit the cube in different positions. We're going to need to create a transform to pass into the emitter. If you're not familiar with what a transform is, I've recently released a video explaining that. I will leave a link to that video in the description. But this, tra this position is going to plug into the transform, and the transform will be plugged into the emitter at the scene space trans transform input. I'm going to quickly make sure emit speed is set to zero. I can lower the time between emits, make sure the emit mode is on once. Then we can also attach the cube to our object to emit. The way we have it right now, nothing is being passed into this position, meaning this is getting a zero, zero, zero that's being passed in and so when we emit it should emit exactly at the origin it's using the center point of the cube for the emission so if we wanted to we could raise this up a little bit so that it's on top of the floor that would be an easy thing to do whether or not it's useful for what we're trying to do is up to you if I increase this to 0.5 and pass that into the Y value, we can see that the cube is now actually a little bit too far up. The reason is because the center point is here. From here to the top is only 0.25. I'll change this to 0.25. And now when I start time, the cube is on top of the floor. So kind of a silly thing to do, but if you care at all, and uh, maybe we're a little unclear on how transforms and positions work. Maybe that helps clear things up a little bit. Since we're generating a line, we're going to need some sort of length of the line. I'm going to go ahead and get out a counter to do this, and we can just set this to 10, for example. The length of your line is obviously limited by the max emitted at once from your emitter. So if you have it on infinite, then you can make a line pretty much as long as you want up to some point uh, you will run out of thermo but for our purposes here I'm just going to use a counter and set it to 10 so how do we figure out which direction this is and what we need to add in order to move in this direction one easy way to find out which way is which is if we get a tag out if you open the tweak menu and touch the gizmo here, we can see that the x axis is this direction, y axis is up and down, and z is in and out, so to speak. These arrows indicate the positive direction, so if we want to move from here over to the right, we need to increase our x position in a positive way. Since this is the x position, this is what we're going to be adding every time we want to emit. A naive approach would be to use the current count and plug that into the X position and then get out something like a timer which we can set to something kind of small like 0.5 seconds. We plug the timer finished into the increase count and the timer finished back into its reset timer and every time the timer finishes, this will increase the count, which will change the position. 
We would then also want to plug the timer finished into the emitter power, for example, so we can start time and see what happens if we do all of that. So there we have it, a bunch of cubes. They're being spaced half a meter apart. And the reason they're now disappearing is because even though it hit the end, the emitter is still happening. And it had a max emitted at once at 20. So there are now 20 cubes being stacked on top of each other. So let's go ahead and fix some of these problems. If we wanted our cubes to be right next to each other, say we're generating a path, for example, then we could take the count and divide it by half or multiply it by 0.5 and plug that into the x position. That would make them touching and right next to each other. And another way to fix this emitter issue is to turn it off and we can use a keyframe to turn it on and now we'll only ever power this keyframe when the timer is done and the counter is not full With this in place, we can see that it will emit them every time the timer is done, unless the counter is full, in which case the emitter stops running and our line is complete. One very important thing to notice here is that this emitter turns on the same exact time that the counter is increased, which is why the first block is not spawning here. It's spawning at 0.5. So even though zero is being passed into the emitter at the beginning, the emitter isn't turned on until that value has changed. Now this is great. This is what we want. In order to make sure that we have something at the origin, I'm actually going to place a cube down here at the origin. Since we may want to have a starting point that doesn't change so I've created a copy of that cube and we'll leave that there. And now we can emit this other cube. So this can be our starting point. And I'll go ahead and label it as such by painting it a different color. We'll just go ahead and paint this white so that we can differentiate that between our other cubes. So now when we start time, you can see we're generating a path or a line of length 10 and then nothing else. And we can increase the or decrease the target time and make this go faster, which is nice because it does go faster, but this is not the fastest we can do. If I get a timer out and set the target time to something really high, get out a signal manipulator and a number displayer. I'll set the number displayer to show time in milliseconds or with milliseconds included. I'll take the current time, plug it into the signal manipulator and plug that into the number displayer, which we can see here. So if I start time, we can see that it's counting up and it will continue to do so. However, we want to use this counter full to freeze the signal manipulator and that will show us when the generation is complete. So we can see there it took 1.3 seconds to make this line of length 10 with every emission at one tenth of a second. Like I said, this is not as fast as we can go. In dreams, we get 30 frames per second and we can see this with the timeline. If we shrink this timeline down to a second and increase 
the size, we can see these individual stripes here. Each one of these is a frame, and there are 30 of them in one second. So if our timer is running at one-tenth of a second, and we get 30 frames per second, that means this timer takes three frames to complete. We can decrease this timeline to two frames and use that instead of our timer to make our functionality run faster. The timeline has a on end trigger and we can set it to loop. So we can plug this on end trigger in the same places that the timer pulse was going to. So we'll plug those into there and now we can delete our timer and now when we start time we can see things finish in 0.66 seconds which is almost half. And so here we have it, a line of length 10 being generated in less than a second. This is the very basic building block of procedural generation. In the next video I'll be going over how to change directions with our generation so that we're not just creating straight lines. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer or address them. And if you'd like to see where I'm going with this, please stick around. I'll see you next time.